All right, crew, more on the uh, two handfuls of a hook project. We've talked about throwing the standard lead hook, a.k.a. the hammer hook. Let's start uh, talking about a really interesting version called the crunch hook. It was thrown by a great boxer named Adler Hoffrey. This is an absolutely beautiful, ingenious hook. It has the look of a sloppy hook to some degree. Now, when we throw a lead hook, what will happen is we know we want to throw punches and bunches. The next shot that comes out of this is going to have any stink on it. It's going to have to be a rear hand shot or a rear leg shot if we're throwing some kickboxing. Uh, so it could be the, uh, the rear kick to thigh. It could be throwing the rear knee, kick the head, what have you. But usually you're going to have more power out of throwing counter revolutions to the body. Meaning if I throw this lead hook, a natural follow up into boxing, it's going to be, be coming back with a, a straight uh, rear hand. You can be throw a rear hook if you want, but you're a little bit open unless it's on inside work. So again, the idea is usually going to be counter revolution throwing these things back and forth. There's ways to double up off of the uh, off of one side, but usually that's going to be predicated off you throwing a jab first, which is a little bit less of a power shot than coming off that straight angle and then moving off into the hook angle. Now what Edward Hoffrey was doing to make sure that he was still getting some power out of the lead hand and could throw uh, a combination off the rear hand or the lead hand was coming up the way to keep the body facing the entire time, which is counter to good hooking theory, which we know is slamming the door, rear foot, the hinge, slamming all the way down the line. What we've got going when he throws the hook, instead of us seeing the slamming of the door, we'll see this hook and he stays pretty much caged on directly in front of us. What is happening here is the fact if we looked at him in full, we'll see the rear knee advance a little bit. That's not really what's going on. Uh, we don't have to think about picking up our knee to make this happen. If you want to think about, if I'm throwing off my lead side, for me as a southpaw from my right side forward, if I think about there's a cable can, uh, running from this uh, bottom uh, floating rib on my right side connecting to the opposite hip point. So, this cable is running diagonally from the hip. I mean, from the hip to the uh, the rib, back and forth this way. I want to think about contracting in a crunch that goes in this direction. I want to think about this rib and this hip meeting in the middle. So we're doing a cross abdominal crunch. The same time, whenever you do that, your rear knee will naturally kind of advance, have a, a slight buckle in motion here. We don't even need to show it because you're not making that happen. This cross crunch is what makes it happen. So when we're setting ourselves up for hook position, instead of having to swing or anything, it's this crunching position that gives that hook some power, which also gives us the beautiful ability, when we're throwing, we'll do a couple of iterations on the bag, uh, the beautiful ability of, to throw a combination that comes out of either side. But again, instead of us doing it with the standard turn on the hook, we're here crunching with it, which allows us to straight, uh, straight on. So if we're looking at it from the back angle here, the standard hammer hook sees me have to turn. And it makes sense the rear hand counter revolution was all the stink is going to come from. With the crunch hook, I get to leave my back facing you. That means I'm chest is facing you for fighting. And that means either hand can probably come back with that combination. It's an absolute thing of beauty. I, and it's also a harder one, sometimes a harder hook to read, as it were. So highly advocate working both your hammer hook, standard hooking, and then make sure you add the crunch hook to your vocabulary.